Morning, welcome back to our car Sangler. So this morning we are fitting up my Lawrence FS9 sounder to the Hobie Outback. The weather has been atrocious and today is as good a day as any to do it. So pretty simple. We've got the screen, battery, bit of cabling and the transducer to fit. Because this is not a brand new unit, it's actually one that I'm utilizing out of my boat. I've got a spare power cable and an extra transducer that I'm going to fit to this machine but I'm going to cycle the display between both my boat and um, the kayak itself. This is literally uh, the bracket, uh, ram bracket that I use out of, my, uh, out of my boat. So to keep it really simple rather than swapping between ram and rail blazer, I've just opted for this rail mount ram bracket C size knob that's going to fit nicely into either the rail or the track on the Hobie Outback itself and that's how I'm going to attach the display to the yak. So let's get into it. So on the Guardian plate, uh, which is this bit here, I'm going to drill the holes off to fit the transducer directly to this plate. I'm using the um, bracket that comes from Lowrance as a template, so I've marked which holes I need to drill, and I'm going to position that and line that up on the Guardian plate and drill off where we need to. Okay, so drilled off the holes, got rid of those two bits of plastic. Time to fit the transducer. Moment of truth, hopefully they all lined up. So the only disadvantage of using the Lowrance bracket as a template is the transducer probably sits a little bit further back than, uh, than I wanted to, but it's still fine as long as when it all fits, that's going to be able to move away quite freely, which it will. So you're not affecting, you don't want the transducer sitting back hitting against the kayak itself. But it all looks pretty good. In the outback itself, there's a hole straight through to the top, um, which basically comes out un underneath the seat. We're just going to feed the transducer cable straight through there. Here. So a couple of things um, about this. This string attaches to the looper string on the, um, the Guardian itself and then once that's all attached you'll have a toggle up the front which you'll pull to actually raise and lower that, that transducer out of the way. 
leave that for the minute. What we're really interested in is the transducer cable. So it's going to basically come up through this scupper hole and we're going to run it down through this grommet here. Basically, they're segmented, so you can run multiple cables through here. And that way it effectively keeps the water from coming up through this hole or any water in the deck inside the hull itself. So now we just got to get the right grommet and see the transducer cable. Right, you can see there's a couple of different grommet sizes. Lengths, two cables, so that'd be like your power cables and stuff like that. What we're interested in is these ones. And what we're looking for is a snug, snug fit. So, see there, it's not, not gonna be a snug fit. It's gonna allow water to get through. I'll just go to this grommet over here. I reckon that one's gonna be on the money. You can just clamp it a bit. See that it's nice snug fit and the risk of getting water in there is gonna be quite low. So that's the one we're going to go for. Okay, so we've got this seal. One side is recessed and one side isn't. So this flat side we want to sit flat against the hull and this recessed side we want to come up and rest against the grommet block itself. So we need to feed this through the transducer cable before we put it into the hull. Easiest way to do it is put the seal in the position you want it and feed the cable through. Just want to line all that grommet and seal up so it's nice and flush and then put it back in place. Just bear in mind your transducer cable cables in general don't like being bunched up so make sure this has got no sharp ends in it. hang on to that you might need it one day
Right there. Eh? Just want that to pull fairly evenly from the middle. Would have been easier if I did this. Just want it snug. Done. Hey, how's it going? So, cut a long story short, my GoPro decided not to film an entire part of this install when I went to edit it so I've come back to reshoot it so there will be a few minor differences uh, in the yak and I'm sure you can try and pick them out but we're up to the transducer install so I've got the transducer cable and it's got a heap of cable there so the excess I've curled up the cable tie and just slung it under underneath and basically what I need to do now is thread this up through the hole to the grommets. Um, there's a grommet on either side so you can actually mount your uh, sounder display on either side of the yak whatever you prefer. For me in my boat it's on the right hand side so I'm going to mount it on the right hand side and that's probably going to be the nicest ergonomic sort of space for me to do it. To get the length of cable right or where about I think it's going to be right best thing to do is set your, your mount up. So I'm going to basically put this in the most extreme spot I can, which will be all the way forward from this uh, this grommet hole here. So I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be looking to have enough cable that if I want to, to put my display all the way forward. So I'm going to come up. That's like, as you can see there, there's heaps of cable. So I've got enough cable to actually mount at the most extreme spot on my kayak. In reality, I'm probably gonna have it set more back towards the back. But it's always handy to have a little bit more cable and not put any tight bends in it. So let's get into it. Ew. Okay, so rather than give you a blow by blow uh, account of stripping and connecting wires together to sort of spare you the pain. Basically what I've done is I've got the normal transducer cable that comes with the kit, but I needed it a bit longer um, just so I have a bit more uh, length at the, this end um, by the time I route it all the way back down and up to where I want to mount the battery which is up on the post here. So I need to extend it a bit. I've used an environmental type splice, so I've connected them together and then put like a heat shrink uh, splice over it, over it, and that'll just stop any corrosion or moisture or anything getting into your connections that are going to give you trouble down the track. Also at the other end, I've got the, the plug that comes with the battery, and I've put a fuse in line on the positive, and that's just to protect the battery. Um, and the wire and anything against any short. I mean, at the end of the day, the kayak is plastic, um, but you never know. It, it, it's there just to protect the, the display and the wire and the battery. So always good to have a fuse spliced in. So from here, basically, I'm going to have my transducer and power plug, and I'm gonna route back from the display back down into the grommet and then any excess wire I'll hide away underneath in the kayak there. So let's get stuck into it.
once again, mindful of your, your grommet. So once again, just choosing a grommet that's gonna suit. And a little bit of jiggling around and come up pretty nice. Righto, so just, just quickly, this is a little ram bracket. It fits straight into your H rail, so in the slot here or here. So simply drop it in. It's in the track there, and then position it to wherever you want it, and then do it up. Do it up nice and tight, it's not gonna move. You can simply do your ram bracket up. It's gonna sit there nice and firm. Pretty cool. Yeah, so that battery, a couple of clips you put on there. I'm just gonna mouse it. And we can obviously move it up and down and wherever, wherever we want. Wanna get it out of the way to put the bin in there or, or something like that, no problem. That up. Away we go. All that's left now is time to put a fuse in. Let's give you a look in there. This excess cabling will just cable tie up out of the way, reduce it getting wet. Okay, moment of truth time. power means we did something right um, now because this is a unit that I'm using already utilizing out of my boat uh, it's not going to need the normal startup menu that um, a new unit would need so it'll just load up as normal and go from there um, if you do install a brand new FS9 unit the menu to get to uh, to follow is very easy to follow the bouncing ball very very simple to, to set up so that's it FS9 unit install on IOB Outback kayak so the only thing left to do now is get out in the water and give it a go so when this weather finds, finds up that's what we'll be doing